Hey, good morning. Um, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and today um, we're going to review something a little bit different before we start in the next section of our book, which is the New Testament. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've told you all that if you have a question, you can ask it. So let me get to where I'm going, and then I'm not sure why my computer's unplugged. My husband must have come in here and used it. Um, let me make sure it's charged. And I'm waiting a couple of you, a couple, I'm waiting for a couple of y'all to come in this morning. Uh, yesterday I was asked a question on my page, and it was a very good question. And I wanted to answer the question today instead of doing our normal Bible study. It is Friday, we're in between two sections, so I, th I thought it would be a good time. And I haven't even had my cup of coffee, so... Every once in a while, I'm going to get a drink. Now, I'm going to go to the, the um, place where she asked the question and read it to you. Let's see. Give me a moment. And it prompted me to want to talk to y'all about another thing, subject. And um, while we're, you know... I didn't flip my screen. That was the whole point using this uh, iPad today. Anyway, I want to talk to y'all. The next thing that we're going to talk about after we finish up our book that we're doing now is how to study the Bible, okay? Because a lot of y'all have questions, and it's a lot easier to answer a question when you go to the Word of God, for one. You don't, you don't go to a person. You go to the Word of God, and you look it up correctly and study uh, the application of the question, okay? So, um, today we're going to study. Here's the question. Let me go down through here. Good morning, Cherry and Judy. Sorry, y'all. It's just taking me a second. I think she put it not on yesterday's, but the day before yesterday's. There's so much to scroll through at the top of my page besides just the Bible studies. I don't know if y'all have to see all that junk or not, or if it's just me because I own the page. <clears throat> but here is, here's the big question. Are you ready? Tammy, and y'all know I say stuff like this all the time. Do you think when we say God or oh God or Lord of mercy or Lord help us, that kind of stuff, that we are using God's name in vain, and is it like saying she's got GD, a word, GD, and a question mark? Now, um, that is a very good question. I'm going to read it one more time because we've got a lot more people on here now. Tammy, do you think when we say, oh God, or Lord of mercy, we are using God's name in vain, is it like saying GD? And that's the bad word. Okay. Now, the first thing when you study a subject, I just didn't want to give her an opinion, okay? Because opinions are totally different than you studying the Word of God and coming up with what you feel is the answer from the Word of God, okay? Now, before we get started, let me put this on Blue Letter Bible because that's where we're going to go. The best place to study something, in my opinion, uh, quickly, like I did last night, is to type in thebluelletterbible.com. And the reason you can do that, the reason you do that um, is so that you can see um, the commentary, the itinerary is what they call it. And they actually take a verse and they spell out each word. You can click each word and it tells you what the words mean in the Hebrew. Okay, so... Um, so the first thing I decided to do was go to thebluelletterbible.com. I don't know what is wrong with my computer this morning. I wish that I, um, I wish that y'all could see the screen. You know, I could put y'all on my, of course y'all all have to tune in again. 
but I could put y'all on my web camera. I'm trying to think. There's a way where y'all can see my screen. Maybe I could figure that out and do it later today. But anyway, blueletterbible.com. If you've got a computer with you today, if you've got an iPad with you, if you've got a phone with you, go to blueletterbible.com. In the search column, um, now I always search at KJV because that's what has been around, I think, you know, it's for me the longest, that's what I like to search. So I'm going to type in, uh, because we all know the verse that it comes from, is do not take the Lord's God, it's a commandment, one of the Ten Commandments, do not take uh, God's name in vain. So I'm going to put God, name, and vain in the search bar. And it's going to pick up Exodus 20, verse 7, Deuteronomy 5, 11, and Proverbs 39. And two of them are the same. That is, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God, in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Okay, that's the two. Those are two are repeated. When God repeats something, it's pretty important. Okay. There are but ones in Exodus and ones in Deuteronomy. Now, um, the next one is in Proverbs, and it's verse 30. And it says, At least I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or at least I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Okay. Now, that is just where those three words that I searched came up in Scripture. That's three words. But really, in order to study what she asked, and those of y'all that are just tuning in, she asked if saying, oh God, or Lord of mercy, was, this, was it taking the God, God's name in vain? Is, is that like saying GD, which is the God, the, the bad word? Uh, because a lot of people would say that if you're saying Lord of mercy or, oh God, that you're taking his name, you're using it frivolously, okay. But what we really need to know is what does this word vain mean, okay. That's how you study the Bible. You don't just, you know, read a couple of scriptures and come to a conclusion. Now, another thing that's behind this is your spirituality, whether or not you have a personal conviction of things. Um, some people may feel personally convicted to wear a dress when they go in a church. Some people may not, okay? Now, I will say that wearing a dress for a woman when she goes into the church, in my opinion, is a, is a person, is a man law, not a God law, okay? There's nothing in the Bible that tells us how to dress as women except the fact that we're supposed to be modestly dressed, okay? So as long as you, uh, and I can see where people would think out of reverence to the Lord, that we should dress nice going into a worship, uh, going into a church. or, you know, But we are the church. That's what we want. We are the church. We walk around every day, and it's our bodies where the Holy Spirit lives. Okay? So that's what we take for granted more than going into the church looking, you know, uh, in reverence. And back years ago, they went to the temple sometimes once a year just several times a year. They didn't just gather all the time like we do. And I'm a Baptist, so we go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And I, I we, me and Chris have just been going Sunday morning, Sunday night. We haven't been going on Wednesday night. Does that mean it's right? No. Does that mean it's wrong? Not really. Um, and not in my opinion. And um, let's see. I don't know where my mouth is. I'm going to have to use my hands. But anyway. Now, to study this really and get the true answer, you need to look up the word vain. So the next thing you do under the word search, instead of God's name in vain, you type in vain. V-A-I-N. You hit the enter button, and um, it occurs 112 times in 102 verses in the King James Version. Now, vain will mean different things for different applications. So let's, let's go back, and in our scripture, the one that we tells us not to take the Lord's name in vain, um, 
what we need to do is there's a there's a uh, there's a tool button next to the verse okay you click the tool button and it brings up these these things um, interlinear Bibles cross-references commentaries dictionaries and miscellaneous okay so if you want to study something you get all these tools to do it so what we do is we click interlinear and it's going to give us the the verse every single word that has its own meaning some of them are groups of words like thou shalt not take is one word okay um, but if you want to study the word vain um, let's see where it is vain you it's a phrase and it's used the Hebrew word the number is 7723 okay so what you do is you click on the word reference number okay because that's a study and what they mean by vain so we know what the Lord's name is we know we're not supposed to take it but we're not supposed to take it in vain so what does that in vain really mean and so you click it and it says this word in its in the same meaning okay uh, because they use words the same words can mean different things okay but we're clicking this word the H7723 to see how many times it's used in the Bible and what it says okay this word is used as the as the word vain in the same meaning 22 times it's used 22 times to mean vanity. It's used five times to mean false. It's used two times to mean lying. And it's uh, one time it's falsely and one time it's lies. Now those are the same words. It, in other words, it's, it's the same reference but for different words. So it's used in a for the word vain, vanity, false, lying, falsely, and lies. Now, it's every time lie is used in the Bible, it's only used one time um, for lies. But every time that lie, L-I-E, is used in the Bible, it's not used as this application. It's only used one time with this application of this word that is in the Ten Commandments. Okay. So... If you if you look it up and this is how I do it and um, there is a way you're supposed to study the Bible okay um, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna hit a highlight of how to study the Bible so you can kind of see why I did what I did okay how to study the Bible these are the, the some of the main things okay and that is, the Bible is not difficult to understand. We make it difficult by not really believing every word that we read. Two, anyone can get a working knowledge of the Bible if they so desire. There is no special secret, no magic formula. And education can be helpful. A knowledge of language can be helpful. But they are not necessary. But now let me just say this. Using the Blue Letter Bible to study a subject is amazing. The Holy Spirit, and this is number three, the Holy Spirit teaches us the Bible. How much you learn corresponds solely to your dependence on Him. Okay? Four, why must there be rules of Bible study? That's one. And I'm not going to go through all of this today because it's too much information. I just want to kind of give you an idea of how you can't just read a verse and come to a conclusion. That's not how you study the Bible. Okay? There is no understanding of the Bible without a proper understanding of context. That's the content. Okay, there's no correct understanding of the Bible without understanding that the Bible is written to three types of people. It's written to the Jews, it's written to the Gentiles, and it's written to the Church of God. Okay, three. The Bible has proper divisions, and you must understand the divisions properly in order to understand the message. Four, all scripture has three basic applications, historical, doctrinal, or inspirational. Number five, which is kind of the one we're going on today, 
God has chosen every event and every individual word in the Bible for a specific purpose. So every word that's jotted down in the Bible, and this is why me and Chris are, you know, a little old school on our King James Version, but every single word is important to him in the Bible. Every single word that these people pinned down on a piece of paper was written by inspiration of God through the Holy Spirit. So when you pick up a Bible translation uh, that's different and they're translating it, um, I don't know, it gets a little icky there. And yes, the King James Version was translated from another format too. Um, so, I mean, it's just, you know, uh, the main reason we pick it is because that it has a lot more uh, salvation type messages, I think, than a lot of the others. Uh, a lot of them want to take out the word blood or hell or different things that really, I think, mean a lot. Um, but we won't get into that today. What I want you to understand is we're studying the word vain. Okay. Okay. First of all, you look it up, and the first verse that it is used in, in the Bible, is Exodus 20, verse 7. And first mentions in the Bible are very important, okay? So you got a verse that says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's the same word. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. It's used again. Used twice in that sentence. So it's the first and second mention of this word in the very first verse that we read, that we bring it up in. All right. And then it's used in Exodus 23, 1, and then Deuteronomy 5, 11. It's the same exact verse in that one. Uh, the second time it's used, it says, Thou shalt, well, actually it's the third time, because it's used twice in one sentence. The, the third time it says, Thou shalt not rise a false report. False is how it's used. Report, put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Now, if you keep reading what this word means and how it's used, there are 48 verses that you can just read. Just read, 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 read. And then you get an understanding of the true uh, application of this word. So, um, I'm going to read some of them to y'all so that you know what I'm saying. All right. Well, I'm just going to read about, and I want y'all to listen. Listen to how the vein, uh, listen to how it's used, and listen to the situation that um, it's used in. Because she wants to know, or if we say, Oh, God, or Lord of mercy, is it the same as saying GD? Okay? And really, it's GD, uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you this, and why would it be? Um, and I'm going to read you these applications, and then you, in your spirit, need to really listen, okay? And think about these applications, how this word is used. Also, keep in mind that this word, I don't even know if it's, let's see if it is. I'm going to scroll down. It's used in uh, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Job, Psalms, a lot, Proverbs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Hosea, uh, Zechariah, Malachi. It's not used at all in the New Testament. Not one time. Now, if you want to just automatically gain an understanding from that, it was never written to the church. Now, does that mean we as the church never look at the Old Testament? No. But I'm just, I'm just trying to show you here how the Bible is written and who it's written to, okay? So, Exodus, it was written in the law. It was one of the Ten Commandments, okay? So, I'm going to read some of these, and y'all listen to the meaning of it. Because remember, the meaning of the word is the same in every sentence. It's the same word. Uh, it's the same application of the word, in other words. Now, it says, Neither shall thou bear, bear false witness against thy neighbor. 
So I am made to possess months of vanity, and wearisome nights are appointed to me. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity. For vanity shall be his recompense. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce stuff like my husband does. That's used twice in that same sentence. If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hastened to deceit. All right. Let me scroll down and read some that are not in Job. The last one in Job is, If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hasted to deceit. All right. It says, Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Um, Psalms. I have not sat with vain persons, neither... Will I go in with disassembler, dissemblers? It says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. They speak vanity every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Okay, um, and if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity, his heart gathereth iniquity to it to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All right, let's, let's scroll down and read some more different ones. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. So, I mean... That verse right there is telling us that our hope ought to be in God because vanity is the health of man. That means that all men are vain, okay, to a certain extent. We're all vain to a certain extent. That's part of us wanting to be selfish, okay? All right. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. All right, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Uh, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. All right. Let me go down here. All right, this is a good one. None calleth for justice. This is a prophet. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Now, um, This is a good one. It's a long one. But listen to it. And when thou, when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? Though thou closest, closest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. Um, and if you keep reading, you'll find that a lot of the, these uses of vanity, almost every one of them, because they're scripture, uh, a lot of them are from prophets um, and things, that it's used in reference to our spirituality. Okay? It's used in reference to um, our falsehoods. All right. So after I read it, and you read, I mean, you got to read them all. I mean, you know, pick up the Blue Letter Bible, type in the, type in 
God's name in vain. Look up that scripture. Press the itiner itinerary. Click the word. And then read how it's used. What he's what the word really means is this. It's like you're it's like if somebody don't believe in God, but they use the word of God in falsehood. Like, for instance, you got an atheist. Um, but in order to fit in with a crowd, um, he pretends to love the Lord. So he uses the name of God in vain because in his heart, he doesn't love the Lord. And God knows he don't. So it's him pretending that he does. It's a falsehood. It's a lie. It's a, um, it's a lot deeper meaning than me saying, holy smoke. Or, good Lord. Okay? It's a lot deeper than that. It has to do with our heart. Okay? It doesn't have to do with just a word that we use. It has to do with our heart. Okay? So, um, it's like, let's say another application would be, mostly it's falsehood. It's pretending to love God when you really don't. Or, it's not loving God at all and telling everybody how bad he is because we know God's not bad. So it's telling lies on God, okay? It's telling lies on, uh, like telling people that God's not real or God is um, not all-knowing or that God is not in control or sovereign or has grace. That's what it is. It's more a lot deeper than what people give it credit for, okay? What most people do is they listen to what people have told them when it comes to studying the Bible. They just automatically come to a conclusion because it's something somebody said, or they automatically come to a conclusion because they read one verse and they make a conclusion, okay? So, um, you can't just pick up the Bible and read one verse and make a conclusion. Even if you've got the Holy Spirit living in you. Now, let's say you've been reared or you've, you've been brought up to think that using God's name in any way besides in reverence is sinful. Um, let's say that in your heart it is sinful because that's the way you've been brought up then by all means, you know, don't say those words. But if you have not been brought up that way and you don't feel like it's bad, like when I say Lord of mercy, I'm not, for one, I'm thinking in my mind a little bit, yeah, I think about the Lord a little bit and I think, Lord have mercy, why in the world? You know, that's the, that is just a, a figure of speech um, does it mean I'm using him frivolously? No, because he's a part of my life, okay? He's in my heart, and I love him. I would never talk bad about him. I would never uh, want to use his name in vain, and I would never use his name in vain. That would be like me getting on here. It's more of a trickery thing. It's more of a falsehood. It's more of a lie, uh, the, this word vanity, okay? So if you in your heart, in your mind, and soul are not lying, then it's not the same application. I hope that helped y'all a little bit. Um, I hope it did because, I mean, really and truly, you cannot just pick up a verse and come to a conclusion. And you can't just come to a conclusion because that's what somebody said either. You need to learn how to study the Bible. Uh, and if you want to get down to the nitty-gritty, the verses were written as the law uh, to the people, the Hebrew people years and years ago, and they're not even a part of the church law. Now, like Paul said, does it mean that we take the law and we throw it out the window? Heavens no. That's what Paul said. Uh, but the law was, the, not, the law is never something that everybody could keep. We're all sinners. We all sin every day. Um, and we have to come to the real, 
realization that um, we as people are not perfect. Um, now, do I think using the word GD is taking the names, God's name in vain? Um, I don't think it's good at all. I think most people use it when they're mad and angry. Um, now, there are some that would use it because it's a habit. And so when they say the word in their heart, it may not have quite the meaning. But I can guarantee you, if I ever used the word, it would be a bad meaning. And it would be an ugly place in my heart that I would be using it from. So I would think it would be sinful. But when, I, when I'm in the kitchen and I'm saying, uh, Lord of mercy, or when I uh, almost fall down a cliff and I say, oh God, or it, it, is that uh, taking the Lord's name in vain? Absolutely not. Because in my heart, I am not sinning. I'm not thinking bad towards God. It's more about not believing who God really is <laughs> than it is using the word. It's more about pretending or being a falsehood or being a liar or using the word uh, to prove a point that's not true. Okay? I hope that helps y'all some. Uh, anytime y'all have a question like that, ask me. Um, what I would say to the same girl that asked the question is please do what I said. Go into the Blue Letter Bible. Go into KJV. Uh, type in God's name in vain. Bring up the scripture. Click the word on the scripture in the itinerary. And then read every single verse. If you'll pick up, because that's how they used a word. Um, if you'll pick up and you'll read all 48 verses, you'll have a good understanding of what he means by vain. Take the Lord's name in vain. I hope, um, and any of y'all can do that. If you're only here watching Facebook, a Blue Letter Bible is at your fingertips. And um, I could always click on it and show you how to do it, but it's not hard to do. Um, you can pick any Bible version you want, but I personally like searching the KJV. Now, if you pick a different version, then it's going to pick out um, how the word's used. I really don't know exactly how it does. I think the only way you can, I think there's only certain versions that have the itinerary where you can look at the word usage and the meaning in the Hebrew language. And since this was written to the Hebrews, I think that's what counts the most, don't you? It was written to the God's people. We just studied the Old Testament. We know the Old Testament is all about the Israelites and God's people. And I know as bad as it sounds, as bad as it sounds, the reality is, in those days, God didn't care about the other people. He really didn't. He loved his people. He wanted his people to show the other people how real he was. What we fail to understand is that God created us to worship him. He cares mostly about our worship. Okay? Not our little individual needs. Now, does he care about our individual needs? Yes. But for the most part, he's God. He's got the whole universe in his hands. And back in the Old Testament, he cared about the Hebrew people. Now, when he sent Jesus Christ here, he opened the doors up for us, the other people in the world. Praise the Lord, right? And then his salvation was not only for the Hebrew people, but all people. All people, A-L-L. -L. So right now we're li living in a period of grace and we should be more than thankful to God that he would even consider us to be his children. When we get saved, does it make us a Jew? Absolutely not. Does it make us a Hebrew person? Absolutely not. It makes us a child of God through Jesus Christ and his blood. That's it. We are part of the church. We're completely different. So when you're reading the Bible, some of it's written to the Jews, some of it's reading, written to the Gentiles, and some of it's written to the church. So let's make sure we apply it correctly. Uh, we will study um, New Testament starting next week. Uh, I hope y'all gained a big understanding of the Old Testament, how it's put together, 
what it's all about. I mean, if you just went through this Bible study with us, you can see how evident it is that God um, tried over and over and over to turn people around. Um, he tried through prophets, through miracles, through um, patriarchs, okay? And no matter what he did, the people just couldn't stay with him, okay? Now we're going to get to the New Testament. Jesus Christ is going to be born. And then after he passes, or he doesn't really die, but after he's uh, dead and resurrected and he's gone, then his Holy Spirit comes to live in us. If we didn't have part of Christ in us as, as Christians, we couldn't follow either. And half the time we don't because we let our flesh take control. Um, that's the only way we're getting into heaven. If anybody ever asks you, um, why do you think you're going to heaven? The only thing that can send us to heaven as believing in Jesus Christ, believing that he's the Son of God, believing that his blood was the true uh, sacrifice for salvation. And that's how we're accepted to God because we're not worthy. There's nothing about us that's worthy. We're not Hebrew. We're not Jew. We're not Gentile, but we are the church. Um, does that mean that Jews are just automatically going to go to heaven or uh, people of the Old Testament? No. Um, God, God has different times and phases on how he, how he uh, talks to us and he reveals himself to us. Um, and right now we're in the period of grace, so it's through Jesus Christ. Um, but going through that Old Testament should have helped you see how much God did care for them, how he did try to rec you know, get his people close to him over and over and over and over, and they just ignored him. And the reason I say that God didn't love the other people is because he didn't have a problem with his people going into a land. This is what people cannot comprehend. He didn't have a problem with his people going into a land, conquering that land, killing every man, every woman, every child, every beast, every worshiping idol. He didn't have a problem with that. You know why? Because he's just. He's just. And if those people were evil in their heart, in their mind, uh, in their worship, he didn't want them influencing his children, the Hebrew people. And uh, that's what people don't want to see about God. They want to see all the love, all the salvation, all the grace, but nobody wants to see that he's jealous or that he uh, will come back with vengeance one day. Um, they want to believe that everything's honky-dory. There's nothing about life that's honky-dory. I hope y'all can see that. Now, I mean, we, me and Chris have a wonderful life. We try to follow the Lord. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Do I do everything right? No. Do I even say a few cuss words every now and then. I've, I've been a lot better at that lately. Uh, and I'll tell you why, because I'm in the Word of God. It changes your heart. I'm telling you, if your heart is right, if your heart's where it needs to be, um, it helps a lot. Now, is my heart perfect? No. It's, but um, I hope y'all had a good day. I hope you've enjoyed talking to me. I've talked long enough. Um, if you want to explore that verse further, if you feel like that I'm wrong in any kind of way, or if you feel a personal conviction about it, look, if God gives you a conviction about something, follow your convictions, okay? We don't have to have the same convictions, but there are things that are spelled out in the Bible that are black and white, and you can't pick and choose what's in there that you want to follow. Now, you can pick and choose a man law because it's not God's laws, okay? But you can't pick and choose the law the out of the out of the book and what I mean by that is you man laws are things like um, you know you got to wear a dress to church or um, you have to wear a suit and tie to church for a man or a sports coat 
or a certain color shirt or uh, I mean the list could go on and on I'd have to think about a bunch of them but you know what I'm talking about it's being a Pharisee it's showing something beautiful on the outside when your heart could be deceitfully wicked um, just because we look good on the outside don't mean we're good on the inside you know what God sees our inside okay he sees our inside he don't care about the outward now I do believe that he wants a woman to dress and cover herself up I do believe that because lust is a sin and we as women should not want to be lusted after the world says we should the advertisements say we should but God's Word says we should not so that is not a man law that is a God law it is not a man God doesn't say a woman has to wear a dress everywhere she goes but he does say that she needs to be covered up uh, modest he even says he even goes on to say that we shouldn't bring a lot of attention to ourselves uh, really he does y'all have a wonderful wonderful day it's Friday I am making a cake on CBC today I am going to make an old-fashioned what they call a lazy daisy cake and I really think I want to do the oatmeal one there's a lazy daisy cake that does not have oatmeal um, and there's a lazy daisy cake that has oatmeal and the one that has oatmeal you soak it for a while before you put it in the cake and you use a cinnamon and a nutmeg in it too and both of them have the same icing it's like a cooked icing on the stove with coconut and uh, it doesn't have eggs or nothing in it like German chocolate but it's cooked on a stove with coconut and nuts then you spread it on the cake and you put it under the broiler of the oven um, and somebody asked me about one so I'm actually gonna make a cake today um, so that'll be good we're gonna have a good Friday I hope and pray that y'all are doing well and um, we're gonna finish we are gonna start the New Testament in our book on Monday and we are going to I'm pretty sure that I may uh, do a lesson next time on how to study the Bible after we get finished with our book uh, let's say our prayers dear Heavenly Father we just thank you so much for today we thank you for the Word of God we thank you thank you thank you for the Word of God that you would have men who are under your uh, spirit to pin down these beautiful words uh, for us we thank you that you've given us minds that we live in a country so that we can read we we thank you for the blessings of just being able to read your word being able to learn about it uh, being able to have technology like blue letter Bible that we could actually pull these words out that mean the same and study something I mean there's so many people that don't have that privilege we are very privileged to be here and we thank you thank you for that we thank you for living in the age of grace where you will accept us as children of God through your son Jesus Christ uh, we thank you for that we thank you that um, we didn't live back in the Old Testament days and, and we were one of those um, outside people uh, that couldn't be a part of your people so now you've opened it up to everybody all over the world and we thank you for that we're all equal uh, through Jesus Christ um, be with us as we go throughout our day help us to shine our lights and help us to want to know more about you in Christ's name we pray amen y'all have a good day I will see you later today on CBC making a y'all my mind lazy daisy cake and if your mama made this cake let me know if she made the oatmeal one or the regular one all the, all the regular one is a regular vanilla cake and then it has the same icing on the top or you can do the one with oatmeal and the in the uh, spices and anytime I can have oatmeal and spices I'm gonna pick it because that's just me I'm an older person so that's what I want um, but y'all let me know if she made it and let me know uh, if she called it a lazy daisy because I want to call the plain one a lazy daisy and the oatmeal one a lazy daisy oatmeal but I think they're all just called lazy daisy y'all have a good day